I just have uh, just a brief uh, opening statement. I have a presentation also uh, on PowerPoint. So, yeah. The Presidential Communications Operations Office, or PCOO, and its attached agencies highly appreciate the invitation to attend this second public hearing on how to stop the spread of fake news. Is legislation the proper remedy? <clears throat> We recognize the proliferation of fake news as one of the pressing issues that must be addressed immediately as it not only affects individual reputation, but also our society as a whole. As such, we are highly appreciative of our good senators for paying attention to this issue. We note that there are already existing laws which may be tapped by anyone seeking redress against fake news or false information, such as the revised penal code as amended by Republic Act 10951. In particular, Article 154, unlawful use of means of publication and unlawful utterances and Article 355, liable by means of writing or similar means. Another landmark legislation is a Republic Act number 10175, or Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012, which has a selection or a section on cyber libel. While we understand that it is the prerogative of the legislature to enact new laws or amend existing ones, we humbly offer the proposition that in such case, fake news be very clearly defined with the assurance that the basic constitutional right to free speech and expression will not be curtailed. We also believe that a holistic and whole of society approach is essential to address fake news and its harmful effects. And we believe that the best way to do it, to fight fake news, is to inform the public on what is really happening in our country and what their government is doing for them to provide a comfortable life for all. Most importantly, we underscore the need for extensive promotion of media and information literacy, which should be a shared responsibility and advocacy of the government, the academe, the relevant industry players, such as private media and social media platform providers and the community. We therefore, find this hearing as another important opportunity to present PCOO's initiatives on the issue and to ask for your support in the legislative branch to further advance our cause of educating the public on being discerning and responsible users of information. Our mandate is not only to provide information, but also to empower the public on how to use these information towards the greater good and to support nation building. The PCOO, its attached agencies, its various communication platform, and its more than a thousand public information officers around the country are working very hard to communicate and promote the government's programs and policies to both Filipinos and people around the world. To cite some examples, we have strengthened our facilities and pursued capacity building for our information officers since we took office. PTV, or the People's Television, has increased its transmission from 25,000 watts to 55,000 watts. And now we are increasing it to 120,000 watts this year to reach more people and provide quality
presentation. PTV ranked number four in the Kantar Media third quarter 2017 media report with highest number of online engagement in its Facebook page at 3,200 per 1,000 followers. And the page has 1.4 million followers from the 30,000 plus followers when we took over. We improved the facilities, programs, and shows from before in order to raise awareness on the government's efforts to improve the lives of Filipinos through television broadcasting. We have enhanced the Philippine Broadcast Service with better facilities and up-to-date equipment in order to reach more people through the airwaves. The government's flagship radio station, Radio Pilipinas, holds the number seven spot in rankings as of third quarter of 2017, coming from zero in third quarter 2016. We air live government news here and aim to mobilize all sectors of society towards nation building. FM2, or 104.3 FM. Another station of PBS soared through the charts, affinity wise, starting from 116 in third quarter 2016, all the way to number one in third quarter 2000. And 17. The Philippine Information Agency, or the PIA, as a government's development communication arm, contributes to addressing fake news through the following. Daily generation and dissemination of timely, accurate, and relevant news by its 16 regional and 72 provincial offices nationwide using multimedia platforms, including social media. These stories pass through the multiple layers of editing and vetting prior to release. Promotion of responsible use of social media, including tips on how to spot fake news, with no less than the Director General of the Philippine Information Agency, taking the lead in doing the rounds for this advocacy. On the 20th to the 21st of March, 2018, the Philippine Information Agency, in partnership with the Infocom Media Development Authority of Singapore, and with the funding from the Japan ASEAN Integration Fund, will organize a media and information literacy for the youth forum. This will be attended by information or media, academe, and youth representatives from the 10 ASEAN member states and Japan, with the objective of discussing cyber wellness issues and soliciting inputs for the cyber wellness materials and campaign which will be launched by all the ASEAN member states later on. The 44-year-old Philippine News Agency, or PNA, the government's official online news agency has been generating over hundreds or hundred articles per day. These articles from Metro Manila and 20 other provincial bureaus nationwide have become a source of news for some mainstream or provincial media outlets. Its newly launched newscast dubbed PNA Newsroom is a five day English news program that provides a daily dose of relevant news from all over the agency's provincial bureaus. It remains objective in its news coverage and has in fact published a lot of news stories covering the side of the opposition. As you will notice in the screen, as part of this state media's upgrade, the Philippine News Agency office underwent its much needed and long overdue renovation deserving of the government's Newswire agency. The makeover has given its staff a sense of pride and motivation. 
And within the PCOO proper, we have strengthened our multimedia production team to help various agencies of the executive branch in terms of promoting their campaigns and accomplishments. We established the Provincial Communications Officers Network, or PCONet, in order to collaborate with LGUs and regional media in explaining the policies of the administration to the grassroots. Together with the Philippine Information Agency, we will be gathering over 1,000 communication practitioners from various fields in the first National Information Convention in Davao City on the 19th to the 21st of February 2018. This three-day event will involve a series of lectures and talks that aim to contribute, among others, to the development of effective and responsible use of information in support of nation building. Throughout last year, we have been promoting responsible information sharing using our government platforms. We have had dialogues with our ASEAN neighbors and measures and best practices to counter fake news and to deliver the right information to the public. In September last year, we organized the ASEAN Ministers Responsible for Information, or AMRI, roundtable discussion on countering fake news and communicating the right information, where we extensively shared experiences and exchanged views on dealing with fake news. We have made mistakes in the past. We have been held accountable for them. But these were honest mistakes with no intention to malign anybody and with no malicious intent. These should not overshadow or speak for the work of thousands in government who work tirelessly to provide the public the right and useful information. Allow us to cite some recommendations where we can work together to promote responsible information sharing and stop the, pre the prevalence of fake news. Number one, Madam Chair, increase the budget for media and information literacy education. We are not only the advocates of real news and accurate information, it should be the collective effort of all stakeholders to educate our people to discern fake from real, from real news to minimize, if not eliminate, the spread of false information. PCO has been going around the country to build the capacity and capability of information officers. This can be a program that can be adopted by schools and other concerned institutions and organizations. There is also a need for government to invest on our public information officers. We have hard-working PIOs in every LGU, in every line agency, in every branch of government. Let's work together in acknowledging the crucial role of their profession in effectively communicating what the government is doing and at the same time acting as channels for the public to communicate to its government. Concerned agencies such as the Department of Information and Communication Technology, or DICT, and the National Bureau of investigation have been tirelessly working for safe access to internet and prosecution of cases against purveyors of fake news and malicious misinformation. Thus, we call for support in strengthening these offices to more effectively deal with cyber crimes. We also underscore that the discussion of fake news should not only be centered on the political bickering and social media. There are extremists who use social media to recruit people to join them. And false announcements also find their way through ICT channels to create panic among the public. These grave acts of misinformation deserve attention in our discussion on fake news. On top of these three recommendations, allow us to also mention that there is so much good news happening in this government. And our time should be spent on communicating how the public can benefit from them instead of putting out the fires of fake news against this administration. In summary, 
The PCOO, together with the entire Duterte administration, has been exerting great effort in promoting responsible use of information. By raising awareness and educating the public, especially the youth, on how to tell fake news from real, we believe we can significantly reduce its proliferation, and we need your support to strengthen our current programs along this line. How to stop the spread of fake news? Is legislation the proper remedy? Our position in this issue is that there are already existing legal remedies in place to address this. And we encourage everyone to take legal action against the parties who are propagating fake news. We also could not overemphasize the importance of promoting media and information literacy as a shared responsibility and advocacy to help the public exercise discernment in consumption of information and responsibility in generation and dissemination of information. We have respectfully submitted to this body our position paper on this issue for your further reference, Madam Chair. And the best way to counter fake news is to be properly informed. Let us work together in achieving a shared vision of a safe and healthy information environment for our people. Maraming salamat po. Thank you for your steps, your suggestion, um, your suggestions, Secretary Andanar.